Good morning, everyone. So wonderful to see you. Welcome to our celebration of the life and ministry of Dr. Matthew Luther King Jr. this Sunday. It is so wonderful to have you joining today for this special and meaningful service. We're so glad that you're here. We are about to begin the service uh, right now, and uh, we will begin with uh, Joyce Derry playing uh, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. We're so glad to have you joining us today. Let us pray. Gracious God, as a star rose and drew people from great distances to Bethlehem, that they might greet the Christ child. Draw us, your church, and all of your people to you, that we might be the church and the people you call us to be. Amen.
hold this truth to be self-evident. That all people are created equal. Let justice roll down like waters. And righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the hand of Moses, your servant, you let your people out of slavery and made them free at last. Grant that your church, following the examples of your prophet Martin Luther King, may resist oppression in the name of your love and may secure for all your children the blessed liberty of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Our God is Marching On speech. The speech was delivered by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at the Alabama State Capitol on March 25th, 1965, in front of a crowd of 25,000 people. Last Sunday, more than 8,000 of us started on a mighty walk from Selma, Alabama. They told us we wouldn't get here, and there were those who said that we would get here only over their dead bodies. But all the world today knows that we are here, and we are standing before the forces of power in the state of Alabama saying, we ain't going to let nobody turn us around. Today, I want to tell the city of Selma, today, I want to say to the state of Alabama, today, I want to say to the people of America and the nations of the world that we are not about to turn around. We are on the move now. Yes, we are on the move and no wave of racism can stop us. The burning of our churches will not deter us. The bombing of our homes will not dissuade us. The beating and killing of our clergymen and young people will not divert us. The wanton release of their known murderers would not discourage us. We are on the move now. Like an idea whose time has come, not even the marching of mighty armies can halt us. We are moving to the land of freedom. I know you are asking today, how long will it take? Somebody's asking, how long will prejudice blind the visions of men? I come to say to you this afternoon, however difficult the moment, however frustrating the hour, it will not be long because truth crushed to earth will rise again. How long? Not long because no lie can live forever. How long? Not long, because you shall reap what you sow. How long? Not long. Truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. Yet that scaffold sways the future, and behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. How long? Not long. Because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. How long? Not long. Because mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. 
Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5 and 12 through 17. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the process the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel, Nathaniel asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you on the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathaniel replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you on the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from the triune God. Amen. This past Friday would have been Martin Luther King Jr.'s 92nd birthday. It's hard to imagine that of all the amazing things he did on behalf of his community, our country, and the world, that he did it all in just 38 all too brief years of life. I often wonder what are the things that occur in a person's life that prepares them to step into history as our brother Martin did when he agreed to lead a boycott of Montgomery's bus system in 1955 when he was only 26, old, 26 years old and in his first pastorate. What indeed. Reading into his biography, I was stunned to learn that twice in his life, young Michael, which was the name given to him at birth, tried to commit suicide, both times by jumping out of a second story window. At the age of six, he befriended a white boy whose father owned a store across the King's family home. But when they started school, they were racially segregated. So the parents of this white child said that he could no longer play with Michael. When he was 10 years old, King sang in a church choir and once was forced to wear the costume of an enslaved child for an all white audience at the Atlanta premiere of Gone with the Wind. I think of all the degradations and betrayals and indignities that young Michael Martin suffered. All the indignities that black children experience then and now suffer. And I wonder what kinds of resources young Michael Martin mustered, what his family mustered, what black families muster to tend to the young fragile egos that racism and white supremacy try over and over to shatter. What might move a child to jump out of a second story window, not once, but twice in his young life. And then I read that his father, Michael King Sr., who would upon returning from a trip to Germany and witnessing the rise of Nazism would call himself and his son, Martin Luther. Had his children read the Bible aloud every day. And I have to imagine that one passage that was in regular rotation in the King household was the Psalm that you and I heard read just a moment ago. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. Despite everything a Southern segregation would throw at young Martin, despite all the resources and state power designed to degrade black life, somewhere and somehow, Martin Luther King Jr. was fed a steady diet of spiritual nourishment that gave him the resolve to believe that he indeed was marvelously made, that he indeed was a wonderful work, and that Black people betrayed by their country also were marvelous and wonderful and worth fighting for. I imagine that every time King experienced setback, Every time racist white society threw volley after volley of violence at him throughout his ministry, arrested him, firebombed his house, made threatening phone calls, branded him a communist, each and every time these words came to him in a flash, a scriptural armor that protected his integrity. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works 
are wonderful. I know it well. These words kept him going. So these words do for you and me. I want to read this psalm together. I want to read this psalm again together. And as you do, I want you to look into your own face on Zoom and in the faces of those in the other boxes. Recite the psalm as a prayer of healing and fortitude for yourself and for others. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body, was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Who else in your life, who else in the world needs to hear this psalm? Who else needs to internalize it to remind them that the violence and indignity of this world, those who want to degrade our common life by rampage and riots and toxic speech and behavior cannot take away the fact that they, we are marvelously made by our loving creator. Think of them in your mind and in your heart. Every person of color or woman gaslighted Every immigrant called an illegal and told to go back. Every LGBTQ teenager bullied and shamed. Every child with disabilities minimized. Every old person dismissed. Every homeless man or woman ignored. Every black person stopped by the police. Every person subject to the cruelties that broken minds and hearts bring to humanity. Pray this Psalm for them to remind them that they are nothing short of a marvel and miracle. Pray this psalm for those broken by violence and pray this psalm for those who inflict violence because they too are broken. They too need to be reminded from where they come so that someday they also can return to the loving arms of their creator. Sisters and brothers, in this historical moment of deep disorder and disunion, pray this psalm as a daily reminder that nothing that God has created is a mistake. Nothing and nobody are beyond God's redemptive love and power. And no community is so shred that the Holy Spirit cannot knit the bonds of affection back together. We are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny, our brother Martin wrote. And what affects one directly affects all indirectly. 
I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And, what, and you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. And so what you and I ought to be, what everyone in our country and in our world ought to be, is to be reminded that we are marvelously made wonderful works of God. Reminded not just in word, but in deed, not just in feeling, but in policy, not just in intention, but also in practice. May you and I work to make it so on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. The Prayers of the People. On this Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, and in remembrance of his life and legacy, we ask that all the people in our nation, irrespective of race, gender, ethnicity, or religious faith, be treated with dignity. Almighty and sovereign God. Thy kingdom come. As our nation undergoes this presidential transition and transfer of power, we pray for peace and reconciliation. Almighty and sovereign God. Thy kingdom come. May your Holy Spirit instill our president with righteousness and the values and principles of your kingdom to exercise the sacred trust of administering the nation. Almighty and sovereign God. Thy kingdom come. We pray for the wholeness, health, integrity, soundness, welfare, security, prosperity, harmony, and justice of all the citizens of our nation. Almighty and sovereign God. Thy kingdom come. Help our nation develop a foreign policy that fosters peace, justice, equality, and freedoms that can advance the development, rights, and privileges of our global neighbors. Almighty and sovereign God. Thy kingdom come. Move our nation to provide international leadership in the good stewardship 
of all the natural resources that you have entrusted to humankind. Almighty and sovereign God. Thy kingdom come. Loving God, hope of the poor and source of all health, look with compassion upon our creatures who suffer under the weight of this pandemic. Fill us with love toward our neighbor. Enable us as we strive for the common good and strengthen those who labor for our health. Almighty and sovereign God. Thy kingdom come. We pray for all those in our community who have asked for prayers. Jordan Hexham, Judith Sheridan, Tommy Thompson, Douglas Lord and family, Hayden Hurst, Sergio, Karina, Amari, David, Marcella and Natalie, Blanca Ruelas, Nicole Stoltz Kumatsi, and David and family, David and Rosa Vasquez. We pray for those who have died and for family and friends who grieve, remembering especially Bob Stryker, husband of Martha, father of Robert and his wife Sherry and their daughter Michelle, stepfather to Matthew and Perry, to Karen and her husband David and their sons Nathan and Benjamin, and to Jeff and his wife Dana and their children Wesley and Erica. Also remembering especially Dal Tran, mother of Dan, Sue, Julie, and grandmother of Tabi, Katani, Ethan, and Jordan. We continue to pray for those named in the ongoing prayer list and for those we hold in our hearts. The parish is invited to offer additional petitions and thanksgivings, either silently or out loud. God hears them all. Loving God, during this important and pivotal week in our communal life together, may there be glory to you in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and evermore. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors of ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. God has made us in one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given the spirit to dwell in our hearts. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace everyone. Let us pray. Beloved Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. 
We love you above all things and know that you are with us since we cannot receive you sacramentally. Come spiritually into our hearts now and always. We embrace you and unite ourselves entirely to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. In your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Generous and loving God, we come to you in thanksgiving, knowing that all we are and all that we have is a gift from you. In faith and love, help us to do your will. We are listening. Speak your words into the depth of our souls that we may hear you clearly. We offer to you this day all the facets of our lives, whether it be at home, at work, or at school. We seek to be patient, to be merciful, to be generous, to be holy. Give us the wisdom and insight to understand your will for us and the fervor to ca carry out our good intentions. We offer our financial commitment to the work of the Church of the Messiah as a true act of faith to reflect our love for you and our neighbors. Guide us in pledging our financial support to the work of the church. Guide us also in our service to one another, reaching out to others as you have reached out to us. Love connects. Amen. Amen. Now in the language of our own choice, we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God the Son, who turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit, who came upon the beloved Son at his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out his gifts upon you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. And the blessing of God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, be with, be, be with you, those you love, and everyone you encounter this day and always. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we still have the birthdays and anniversaries on the screen so that we can uh, recall who uh, in our community is celebrating and so that we can call them and reach out to them and wish them a happy birthday or uh, anniversary. Um, it's always a joy to have you uh, with us, and especially on this uh, Martin Luther King Sunday celebration uh, is always a very moving and profound service, and I'm glad that you have joined us this morning. Um, I want to remind you that we will be having our annual meeting on February the 7th, so please keep that in your calendar. We will do it through uh, via Zoom. And also, um, uh, by the way, I want to welcome Carol Harvey. I know that if we were gathered in person, we would probably go and give her a big hug. So Carol Harvey, wherever you are in this screen, please feel the love of all of these brothers and sisters from Messiah. Uh, I hope it will warm you up where, there where you are, which is probably little, little snow only. Um, as you know, we have I sent a, an announcement on, on Friday I mean, this week uh, about the passing of Bob Stryker, a beloved saint, and um, we'll keep, uh, please keep in your prayers, Martha and their family. Um, we'll be sending a postcard via uh, mail to uh, all the other members, to, to, including you from the parish who are not joining via Zoom and probably don't know, and so we will let them know as well. Um, we will... Uh, when we are able to regather, we will plan, uh, we will have a, a, the opportunity to come and say goodbye and to offer a memorial service and, and feel uh, Martha and her family with so much love. What a great saint uh, have gone to the great life. We also keep in our prayers the family of Dao Tran uh, for his passing as well. Um, changing from this to another, uh, focusing on the breakout groups that we would do. We have a question for you that we would like you to, to uh, talk in your breakout groups. And that is, um, if Matthew Luther King Jr. ask you, what can you do tomorrow to make the world a better place? What will you answer? I'm going to repeat it again. If Martin Luther King Jr. asks you, what can you do tomorrow to make the world a better place? What will you answer? So we will have some minutes. Uh, Father Jim Lee is going to create the breakout groups and we will regather in about uh, seven to eight minutes to say goodbye. Uh, so Father Jim, please create the breakout groups. <laughs> 